My name is uh, Jason Haddix, and this is uh, Domain Discovery, Expanding Your Scope Like a Boss. So uh, we did some strike through here, because it's not just domain discovery. I added uh, a little bit of web discovery here. Um, this talk is primarily focused around uh, my discovery methodology. I by no means think I have the best discovery methodology, but I think it, uh, it gets me uh, a lot of sites to hunt and bug bounties and, uh, and pen tests when I'm going after a certain entity or a business or something like that. So um, that's my Twitter if you want to yell at me at Twitter. Um, I work for Bug Crowd, who does bug bounties, so we manage enterprise bug bounties. Um, on the global leaderboard of uh, 600,000 registered testers, I'm 59th currently on Bug Crowd. Um, and I play a lot of video games. That's me and my son. Uh, and we're both wearing matching dinosaur shirts, if you can see that. So. Um, OK, so this is my methodology in a nutshell. Um, and if, if you guys might have seen this a couple weeks ago, I did release a version of this, but I've added more since um, I did that version. So um, my version of, this, of a methodology to do discovery for hacking websites, uh, this isn't an OSINT talk where I'm going to go into hacking people. and individual information. This is a methodology to find more web assets for me to go after in a bug bounty or pen test. Uh, usually, when you find undiscovered uh, assets, uh, web assets, they are less secured than the main domain. And so in bug bounty world, that means um, that uh, they will be less secured, and I can find better, more critical bounties on these sites. Uh, so we start with identifying our target, um, their main TLDs. Uh, we move on to domain scraping for those discovered TLDs. Uh, we go into domain brute forcing. Um, we then we go into permutation scanning and port scanning. We do some visual identification. Um, we do some auxiliary stuff. And then we go into the sites that we have now discovered, and we start doing platform identification, content discovery, and parameter discovery. So this is kind of how it works. All right, so the first, the first thing you do when you start trying to find or discover uh, you know, uh, assets or IPs or anything associated to a domain, um, and it's hard to see this, but uh, you actually have to look up their ASN, right? The, the autonomous system number for a company, right? So this is their kind of registered IP space. Um, they're all assigned an ASN number. Um, here I've looked up Tesla, so Tesla has a couple different blocks here. Um, so uh, the site to use this, uh, site to do this is that I used to do this is Hurricane Electric. It's one of the only uh, free sites that will let you pull down the large set of ASN data. Some of them will let you pull it down, but only it will limit you at like 500 requests or 500 lines of, of the output. Um, so here I can see that uh, Tesla Motors has a registered net block of uh, 209.133.790.24. Um, so this will be one way I start gathering or uh, basically searching for uh, their IP space so I can start looking for assets. Um, this is just one out of all. Usually when I start, though, I'm starting from a bug bounty. So I already have a couple targets to start with, usually their main domain. So uh, for Tesla, we're using them as an example because they have an open bug bounty, and it's pretty permissive. They say anything uh, that we own is in scope of the bug bounty, uh, including the cars and the web assets and stuff like that. So um, I would already probably have Tesla.com or TeslaMotors.com in scope, and then I would look up their ASN. Um, so then you want to do uh, reverse who is. Um, so manually, you can use these two sites. There's also some tools that automate this. So one of the frameworks I'm going to use a lot, uh, I'm going to rely a lot in some of the next slides is called Recon NG. And they have a module for reverse DNS, or reverse who is, excuse me. Uh, but if you want to do it manually, these are the two, uh, again, uh, the two sites that you want to use because they don't cap you at the amount of stuff that they pull back. Um, again, all these sites that do this online um, kind of reverse DNS information or give you information about domains and stuff like that, they want to charge you at some point for some of this info. And as a pen tester, I'm not going to pay you know, $70 every lookup I need to do. Um, so reverse DNS, or reverse who is, excuse me, will, uh, will find some more uh, scope targets for, for this type of stuff. Uh, the last one in this area is, uh, is acquisitions. So um, this is actually... Uh, the end-all, be-all site for acquisitions. Crunchbase marks all this stuff um, when a company acquires a new company. Um, they mark it all in their acquisitions table. Um, so you can just go up to the URL at Crunchbase. It's uh, crunchbase.com organization, then your organization name. And you can see here I have a list, a list or a history of everything that uh, Tesla has acquired in the last 10 years. Um, so depending on if your pen test is really open scope or your bug bounty is really open scope, these. These domains are now top-level domains that I have to put back into the beginning of my discovery. So um, 
Grauman Engineering, Solar City, Riviera Tool. Um, I'm sure if I was doing this, I would also want to check out SpaceX just because I know that they're related to Tesla. Um, so uh, you also want to add these top level domains to, uh, to your testing. Um, this should be automated. Like some of these sites should be automated, but these sites really want you to pay for this data. Um, so uh, they're all protected by different bot protection tools. So this one's protected by Distill, which is actually pretty good. Uh, using a web scraper doesn't work like all the normal web, web scraping libraries that you would, because otherwise I would automate this as part of like a tool or something like that. Um, okay, so that is that is gathering from like OSINT sites. Um, what I want to do now in this section of the methodology is move on to uh, finding subdomains. So I found a whole bunch of top-level domains. Um, I found IP addresses that they've used. Uh, now what I want to do is find uh, probably subdomains. And there's a couple different ways to do this, um, but they involve scraping more of these open source sites. Um, so what do, we, what do we do in this case? Well, uh, basically, when you're doing subdomain scraping and you're trying to find more subdomains of a top-level target, a TLD, um, you want to scrape search engines, right? So the idea here is you would go to google.com and search uh, site colon tesla.com, and you would get a whole bunch of results that come back. And that says um, tesla.com, right? And then also a search result that comes back is admin.tesla.com, tesla.com, forum.tesla.com. And iteratively, you make more Google searches, removing those ones that you found from the list until you have no more results and you have a full cache of everything Google's ever seen for tesla.com, all the subdomains. Um, so that's manually is, is kind of a hard process. So you use tooling to do this. The other, uh, the other place that you can look for subdomain data is inside of certificate transparency projects. So cert.sh, Google Certificate Transparency Project, and uh, their OpenSSL subject alternative name space. Um, now, these are kind of individual talks. You can go into like scraping subdomains out of certificates, or you could go into search engine scraping. Um, I think there's already been a couple talks on this. So we're just going to go into the automation of these and what I use to make this quick. So there's two tools for doing all this subdomain scraping and finding targets. One is um, Recon NG, which I have created a script around called Enum All that wraps around it. It's a Python wrapper. And there's another one called Sublister. Um, and they're both really good. They both do the same thing. These are the sources they pull from. It's kind of hard to see, but um, on the right, Sublister does, uh, or in the middle, they both do Google. They both scrape Google, like I just described. They do the same thing on Bing. Um, they look in the cert.sh project, which is the SSL certificates directory. Uh, they look in the ThreatCrowd API and the NetCraft API. Now, individually, they also do some different sources. Sublister handles Baidu, Ask, DNS Dumpster, which is the scans.io project. Virus Total and PT Archive. In some way or another, these sites all have a website that's aggregating domain information somehow, and these tools will scrape that out of there for your target. So they will find Tesla subdomains for me. Recon NG individually will do uh, SSL Tools API, Hacker Target API, and Shodan, which is a pretty popular one. And then they have a whole bunch of optional modules that you can bake into Recon NG. Um, so disparate tools but the two best tools. So if I want to scrape all of these, I don't really want to have to use both. Um, so this is a tool called Sublister. Um, and so, oh, this is the one I showed you, Sublister. And so this is a run on the right. It's hard to see. But um, basically, I've, I've set it to go after Tesla.com. Um, it runs. It searches Baidu, Yahoo, Google Bing, Netcraft, DNS Dumpster, Virus Total, Threat Cloud, SSL Certificates, and PassesDNS.com. And then it just gives me an output of all of the domains. And you can kind of see them. You can see tesla.com, auth.tesla.com, autodiscover, uh, dev.tesla.com, forums.tesla.com, et cetera. So I've significantly expanded my scope now from just tesla.com to go after. So the other tool was enumall that I wrote. Um, and I don't really feel like running them all independently. Um, I want some form of automation around this. Um, so this is a project called Brute Subs, which basically can take any recon tool written in any language um, if you make a Docker file for it and spin it up and run it and give you the output from, from such tools. Uh, so Brute Subs specifically takes my tool, enumall, and Sublister, and a couple other tools we're talking about, and we'll run them. Um, there's some configuration required. You have to set up the Docker image with some of the modules that aren't included by default, make a custom environment fi file. But once you do that, all you do is Docker up, and it will run um, all of this domain scraping for you and just give you an output text file from three or four different tools that, um, that we're going to talk about in the next couple seconds. So this is a run on the left. You can see 
Um, it does a little bit of everything. It does the scraping. Um, one of the tools is actually a brute forcer. We're not going to use it because we're going to use something else for brute forcing. All right, some other uh, subdomain uh, finding tools that are scraping data. Uh, the one that I find really cool here is uh, Cloudflare. Uh, so Cloudflare, basically, when you log into the Cloudflare site and you go to add Cloudflare to a domain, uh, you know, potentially that you own, um, you type in here Disney.com, right? Um, and it'll tell you if that's already used, basically, if, if Cloudflare is already running on that domain. Um, so this isn't my screenshot, by the way. This is the tool author screenshot. Um, so uh, by iteratively putting in names into that search field on Cloudflare once you're logged in, um, you can verify or not verify that they have a subdomain in existence with Cloudflare. And Cloudflare runs on 15% of the internet right now. Um, so you can get a massive amount of uh, basically OSINT information from this kind of API or web portal that they have. Um, so here, uh, it's run against Disney. You can see that it's returned some success querying the, the DNS archives of Cloudflare. Um, there's another one that's individually um, test census.io, uh, census and um, that's another project for aggregation of, of web data. So these are bespoke tools that, that don't really fit into anything, but I really like this Cloudflare one. OK, so we scraped a whole bunch of stuff off the internet, search engines, a whole bunch of open source sites. Um, now we have to move on to basically guessing um, at, our, at our target, right? So um, I might have some search engine results, but now I want to do this, uh, this idea of brute forcing the subdomain. So the classic example of this is that you have uh, tesla.com, and then you try to resolve admin.tesla.com. And if it resolves and you go somewhere, then that site exists. If it doesn't resolve, it doesn't exist. And you iterate over this in a tool. Now, over the years of pen testing we've done, multiple tools have come out for this. Fierce was probably the first and best one. Um, new school ones are like Subbrute, Black Sheep Wall, um, DNS Parallel Brute Forcer. Now, the problem with these is that they take a long time with the big list that you're trying to brute force, right? Um, and different projects have come out with different lists as well. And some of those lists are really long. Like, uh, this one is a million lines long. And to do that normally, or at least in my experience, in a, took you know, days to weeks to run through a brute force of, of that kind of stuff. Now, this is actually um, some research that I did. I basically benchmarked all these tools. So you can see that the two, two best ones here are two tools called GoBuster and MassDNS. Go is GoBuster is written in Go, obviously. It does subdomain brute forcing. With this list, uh, this one million line subdomain brute forcing list, uh, it completed that whole thing in 21 minutes. Uh, MassDNS finished it in a minute 24 seconds. Now, the reason mass DNS is so fast is because it's written in C. And instead of uh, using just your DNS infrastructure that you're connected to, um, it has a list of DNS servers that it cycles through in parallel to resolve the sites. It gives you more false positives, but it runs very, very quickly. Um, so uh, these are the two tools that, that I integrate into my methodology to do DNS uh, brute forcing or sub subdomain brute forcing. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. The, um, well, Subroot obviously aired out, um, but Darren, DNS Parallel Prober and Black Sheep Wall returned uh, 61 and 43 respectively, but they were all included in the data sets of GoBuster, GoBuster and MassDNS. Yeah. OK, so that file um, that I said was a million lines that you're doing for uh, subdomain brute forcing. Um, that is a file that is made out of basically every file that I could find um, that has ever done this type of work, subdomain brute forcing. So the fierce list is in here, DNS scan, uh, the deep magic top 500 prefixes for subdomains. Um, there was some research earlier this year by a guy named Bitquark um, who, did, uh, who did scraping on the web of the top million most popular subdomains. Remember, we're brute forcing just names to see if they resolve, so we want to have a good list to brute force from. Um, so this is everything that's ever existed, as far as I could find. Uh, so it's all, cat or it's all catted into one file for you to use at that gist. Uh, you can just grab it. And the idea here is because mass DNS is so fast um, that uh, uh, why not just use a huge list? It doesn't matter, right? It gives us better coverage. So uh, mass DNS can complete this in a you know, minute 30. So um, the, uh, yeah, there's even some extra stuff in here that were not subdomain lists. So like the raft list. 
Um, and um, these were URL brute forcing, so using words to find URL paths. And I found that to be sometimes useful in uh, fuzzing subdomains as well, or, or brooding subdomains. So those are incorporated into this list as well. Uh, Daniel's project, robots disallowed, I ported to a DNS structure to be in here as well. So. OK, so I've done a ton of brute forcing, and I've found some stuff that resolves. I've scraped a whole bunch of stuff off the internet, and I've found a whole bunch of stuff that might exist, because it was off search engines or in all these open source, ca open source caches. Uh, now what else do I do? Um, well, a quick part of the methodology is trying to find permutations on the stuff that I found already. So um, the idea is that um, you know, I may have brute force for admin.tesla.com, but a lot of people use subdomain nomenclature that's like acs.admin.tesla.com, right? Um, so what AltDNS does is it takes keywords that it's seen before, um, permutations, and uh, throws them in to uh, your results of other tools. So you take the result of other tools, um, and you go ahead and run it um, against, uh, against the domain, and it will add these permutations all over, and then find additional subdomains against uh, stuff that you've already found, because they use these, naming, these weird naming structures in a lot of places. Um, the other one, this is kind of interesting. I've only used this once in success, but I really like the idea behind this. is um, It's called SB or SDBF. Um, it's called uh, Smart DNS Brute Forcer. The approach here is to use Markov chains and some statistics and an n-gram model um, to basically generate these permutations of domains. Um, I actually don't know what all that means. I've just used this tool, and it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so the white paper, this was an academic research project. Uh, he's published the code for this. Um, I'd say the variance between this and alt DNS is actually very low, maybe like 10% more I found with this than alt DNS, but I've only run it a couple times on a couple of projects. So, uh, but I like the idea and it has fancy names. So. Yes, with 100% coverage so far, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, so I've done uh, I've done acquisitions, I've done their ASN, I've done um, subdomain scraping from all kinds of public resources, uh, I've done permutation scanning uh, to find bespoke, like, weirdly named subdomains. Now I need to move on to doing some, some sort of actual port scanning, right? So I have a whole bunch of targets, right? Um, there's really no other solution better than mass, uh, mass scan. It's just what you do, right? Um, Nmap will take forever with a large ASN, not to mention the amount of time it would take to add on all those domains I found. Um, so you just can't use it. It's, it's going to take forever. Um, so for a large targets ASN, like 65,000 hosts live or something like that, uh, the run from Nmap is kind of infinite and you fall asleep. For mass scan, you can do a scan like this in 11 minutes. Um, and so the problem with mass scan is that by default, it doesn't have a default ports list. It's kind of meant for projects where you scan the whole internet for one port. So you'd have to specify in the command line all the ports you want. These are all the ports that are the default Nmap ports here. So you can use this command line syntax and just plug it in and go. Or you can use a config file and put all these ports in your config file for mass, mass scan, and it will go out and search. Uh, it'll go out and port scan all this stuff. So it's written in C, it's distributed um, really fast, and so that's why it can do what Nmap can't. It doesn't have any of the functions that Nmap has for server versioning, for Nmap scripting engine. It doesn't have any of that. It's just a port scanner to tell me what's up, and it's really fast. It's only TCP. The, the output of the tool? Oh. Uh, it's just, I think it's just a list, like, yeah, a list in the command line, yeah. Um, oh, actually, no, it supports uh, OG, which is the Nmap syntax for XML, comma, separated value, and something else, too, right? Uh, list, as well. Greppable, greppable, there we go, greppable, yeah. Um, cool. This, this tool will melt your boxes, um, so make sure to do it on DigitalOcean and not your home network. It will DOS your router. Okay, so... I have port scanned a lot of stuff. I have scraped a lot of stuff. Um, I have a lot of sources that I'm building from. But um, in the first part of the methodology, we were scraping public sources, and those things might not be on the internet anymore. Like, they, they might have been taken off. Um, they might actually have a registration, but they're redirecting to the home page of the site I'm, I'm after, right? So a lot of the, when I did this run, uh, when I did Tesla, a lot of the sites redirected back to just teslamotors.com because that's their main domain, right? They had registered something either so that some, 
you know, Nerd wouldn't hijack a domain that sounds like them, um, or they had uh, maybe planned to use a site eventually but never did, or something like that. So there's a lot of registration and redirects and stuff like that. So you need to do some visual identification, um, but I'm not going to go in my browser and open up like 400 tabs of sites. That's inefficient. So what you do is you use a tool called Eyewitness. Um, there's a couple tools that do this, but I like Eyewitness the best. What they'll do is they'll take your list of output, um, and since I've been scraping from search engines, sometimes I don't get the protocol that I'm supposed to visit for that site. So it might be HTTPS, it might be HTTP, uh, depending on the source where I'm scraping from. Now, um, what Eyewitness will do is it'll try to visit a subdomain or a domain in both HTTP and HTTPS, and it'll take a screenshot, and it'll dump it in a folder. Um, and then it will sort them by uh, the length of that screenshot. Um, they'll also pull header information and content type and sort them into folders for that as well now, too. Um, so what I do is I run this on the output of everything I've already done, um, and I start visually inspecting. And so you can see some thumbnails there for uh, kind of what the screenshots look like. But eventually, what you'll see in a large engagement like this against an open scope target is like an employee login, and that's where kind of I would want to start, or a partner login, or uh, maybe an old marketing page that has you know, long since been forgotten, or a page that looks like it's coded in a language that um, you could probably kick and it would fall over. So um, that's kind of where you would want to start. And this is a run of uh, Eyewitness on the left. The added benefit of Eyewitness is it has a library to take screenshots for a couple other protocols too, not just HTTP and HTTPS. It'll also take screenshots of um, RDP and VNC. So if these sites have those ports open, it will take a screenshot of the RDP login. So I've actually scored um, pretty good money on sites that have left RDP exposed to the internet with admins still logged in, so I had their usernames, and all I needed to do was brute force their passwords to get into their RDP instance. RDP. VNC. One second. Take a drink. Any questions? Um, not in my methodology. Usually I'm going after web targets. Um, but the mass scan output will give you all those ports. So if I want to, I can go back later and look at SSH, FTP, whatever protocol I want. I would probably look at public facing databases, like nobody should have that, right? I want to brute force those. Uh, I don't know, other interesting ports. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Some auxiliary um, stuff for, for enumeration here is. Uh, is um, if people have DNSSEC enabled, um, you can use a couple of DNSSEC tools uh, in the LDNS utils package um, to walk the relationship of uh, DNSSEC registered domains. And um, this, uh, this has to do with a presentation that was at a conference that uh, I held called Level Up at Bug Crowd. We invited a whole bunch of our bug hunters to come and talk about their techniques. Um, he did a whole talk on, on this idea of LDNS walking. Um, and NSEC walking, and then even NSEC3 walking, which are all technologies related to DNS uh, sec. And so uh, the presentation there um, taught me a lot about these, these couple methods. There was another one for um, basically using GitHub um, to uh, find secret keys, internal credentials, API endpoints, and domain patterns inside of, um, inside of GitHub. So just searching your target inside of GitHub really is, is all it is. Um, you go to the search box. You say Tesla.com, and now um, you know any partner that's ever integrated with them that has open source core code. You get their domains. They might have left you know API keys and stuff in there like that. Um, so there's also just like the simple fact that people also uh, don't actually just visit the site and see where it takes you. So this isn't passive, but this is active. Um, so one method is to use just Burp Suite and Scope filters to find additional domain coverage. Um, so uh, I'm going to show that in a second. But basically you load up your main target uh, through an interception proxy burp suite for web testers. Uh, you visit it, and then the JavaScript will start firing. You walk it a little bit, and you'll start to, you know, your site tree on the left will start to build up. And then you can just uh, nuke your scope down to a keyword of like tesla.com and start looking at additional sites that they were linking to. Uh, and then you can also do a ton of Google dorking for things like, um, like people's um, ads keys for Google. So uh, if a company registers an ad key for Google, they're going to use it globally across a lot of domains. So if I want to find all of their sites, I might want to Google for their ads key. Um, also, companies across all of their sites use the same privacy policy in terms of service. Um, so if I can find that, I can Google for that string and find domains using that. 
um, and then um, looking for people's S3 buckets and AWS buckets. Um, that's in a presentation by um, uh, Ben Sagdehipor, I think is how you say his last name. Um, he was an intern of mine at Bug Crowd. He works at HackerOne now, and he did a presentation on that, which is linked on the right as well. Those are, those are methods that take kind of a while and um, could have their own talk, so I don't go into all of them right here. So this is just like a simple idea of what you do with Burp, so I'm gonna kind of try to do a live demo. Uh, I'm gonna fire up Burp Suite. So this is using Burp to kind of find um, all of the domains you can that are linked on one site. So I'll start at Burp. Any of you in here use Burp? Yeah? It just, sits be, it just sits between your traffic and the server, and it shows you everything that goes by it. It has a whole bunch of helper tools to manipulate that web traffic. Well, I'm that it has, like, um, injection they have a scanner in it. They do. They have a web scanner in it. But today, we're not going to focus on any of that. So, um, OK, so I've opened up Burp Suite. And I have a Chrome tab here that's directed to pass through Burp Suite. So if I refresh tesla.com, you'll see my proxy tab lights up. I'll let this through. Um, so all the traffic's now flowing through Burp Suite to the internet. You can see on the left-hand side, a whole bunch of stuff has, how many domains have traveled through. Um, now, uh, I want to make sure that I completely, um, I completely spider Tesla so I can find every related domain. So here's tesla.com down here. I can right-click here, right here and spider this host. It'll say, would you like to modify the scope to include these items? You want to answer yes here. And I'll say yes here. All right, so this is going to spider tesla.com with the web spider. You can see it's transferring bytes. It's making requests. It's got some forms queued. I'm going to stop it here, because this could take a long time. Um, and now I've got a whole bunch of stuff in this site tree on the side, right? And these, uh, this will expand out pretty large if I continue that spider to uh, its finish. Not all these are Tesla sites, right? These are all links that were on their sites. But uh, an easy way to just find more scope for your target is just to go to your scope tab here. And you can add a new rule here in your scope and just add a keyword under your host here as Tesla. And then click here on the ribbon and say show only in, Skype, in, in scope sites. Now these are all Tesla sites that uh, were linked from their main domain. Now what I'd want to do is select all of these, spider all of these recursively, find out what they're linking to. Um, and use the same filter to try to find more domains. So recursively, I could do this and probably find a ton of their stuff that they're linking to on their sites. Um, any questions there? Cool. All right. That was the only one I didn't have an animated GIF for. So. All right. All right, so I've identified a ton of sites to hack now on a large scope program or pen test. Um, now I want to do some actual identification of what software they're running to actually do the hacking, right? Uh, I found a ton of scope. So there are some tools that uh, already exist to tell you uh, what technology stacks that these sites are using. Um, Wappalyzer and Built With are two browser extensions that you can use that will automatically, just based on the headers that come back from the site, based on strings in the source code of the page, um, the HTML source code, um, they just know it's built with WordPress, or they know it's built with whatever framework, right? They can even go as deep as telling you um, sometimes what the databases are that are running the project. So uh, Wappalyzer and Built With, uh, they're just little buttons that sit inside of your browser, and you can click them and get full stack information. The reason I want to know the full stack information is because it helps me know what techniques I'm going to use to try to hack that server. Um, there's also another thing called retire.js, which is a scanner to find outdated server-side JavaScript libraries, um, which is super cool. You can use that. Um, I use it a lot. Um, and then this, this is a new tool called um, Volners, or it's not a new site, but it's a new burp extension that I like. So uh, Volners.com is a repository of basically CVEs. Um, and instead of the actual CVE advisory, they give you exploitation data on how to exploit old versions of software, um, like you know, old hacker sites used to do. Um, so they give you all the write-ups of the original person who exploited it. It's not just like, hey, there, might, there is a you know, buffer overflow in this area of the application. This is the CVE number. Um, so what Burp Volner Scanner will do is it will find 
um, basically pages. You load it into Burp, you browse a site, uh, and it'll tell you what technologies the site is using and what CVEs, based on the version number it's returning, it might be vulnerable to. And it has complete links inside of Burp in the bottom right-hand corner there that you can go to and click and, uh, and find exploitation info. So um, it's a pretty sweet Burp suite tool that uh, I like a lot right now. It's plugin, yes. Burp, Burp suite plugin, yeah. No, Volner's just released it, um, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. It's not in the BAP store yet. Uh, at least it's not as far as I'm aware. So it's on the GitHub on Volner's, Volner's.com, Burp Volner's scanner. That's where, that's where it is. So this is just loading the extension and running it on something. Eventually, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the, um, you'll see the output right. Going to a site, selecting a site. Yeah, it sees vulners detected, and there's all the CVEs that might be associated to that site because of its versions on the bottom right-hand corner. Cool. All right, so I now have uh, a bunch of targets. I've started to identify their platforms. I have auxiliary ports to test. I really have a lot to test at this point on a large scope pen tester bug bounty. Um, now what you have to do in any like web test, if it's a web technology, is you have to discover all the content of the website, not just by spidering stuff that exists, but trying to find stuff that doesn't exist. So um, this, is a, this is a thing called content discovery or directory brute forcing on websites. You'll learn about this if you take any web hacking class. It's basically brute forcing paths um, on your URL. So uh, let's say I'm hacking tesla.com. Um, and there's a, there's a hidden page that is basically the admins page, and it's slash admin. But that's never linked anywhere on the site. Only employees know about that path to go there. Well, the way you find this stuff is you brute force um, words after that path, after the main tesla.com path. Um, so um, here, this, just like the old tools in DNS, used to take a ton of time to do. Um, tools like Potador, um, or, uh, or any other directory brute forcing or content discovery tool, even the content discovery tool in Burp, um, not super fast. Uh, GoBuster is kind of the new school tool to do this. It's written in Go, it's multi-threaded. Um, it really does a good job for this. So you can burn through a large list of brute forcing, um, this kind of stuff, uh, with GoBuster in, uh, I can tell you what it's completed in. Running, sorry? It is. Yes, it has um, some of the same functionalities as the cooler tools where you can, uh, so it took 40 seconds to run on a 500,000 500, line directory brute force list, which is really fast if you don't know. Um, that's super fast. Uh, for brute forcing the passwords? Uh, I think Medusa was the one I used last, I think. Medusa? Yeah, Medusa. Um, anyway, okay, so um, you're brute forcing URLs, right? So you have a fast tool, GoBuster, um, but you also need a great list to find out what common paths there are. So there's, there's three lists that are really kind of the industry standard now. Uh, SecList is a project that Daniel and I run together, and it has lists of um, paths that usually exist that are sensitive. Uh, Dan did a separate project called uh, Robots Disallowed. He went out to the whole internet, right, Dan? And, and basically found every robots.txt file that existed, which is the stuff that admins don't want you to spider, and then put that into a list so you can then spider it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like the whole internet's data. So it's super cool. You run that through GoBuster. It's really fast. You'll find good stuff there. Um, then there's these uh, digger word lists. Um, these digger word lists are two projects put out by... I forget what consultancy it was. Um, it used to be Stack and Lou, which is now Bishop Fox, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so they're cool guys. They had these digger tools. And what they did is they went to um, the source code repositories, GitHub. And there's another one. I don't know what, what the other one was. What? Might have been Bitbucket. I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, they went there and they spidered all the code from those projects. Um, and then parsed out the paths, any paths that they saw for directories, and then made lists based off of that and reoccurring instances. Um, so you can use any three of those lists, but use them with um, GoBuster. You can also do this inside of Burp, um, but it's, it's just not as fast. But if you want to keep it all in Burp, you can do it in Burp. All right, so now I have paths, I have sites, I've got a ton of stuff to work with. Um, uh, is there anything else I need to do? Um, there can be. 
I don't do this a lot because this is like an extra step, but it is worth mentioning. I think it's a cool idea. Um, so the idea here is that I might have found a whole bunch of scripts, and maybe I found an admin script or resource on the page. Uh, but this resource doesn't tell me how to use it. I'm not an admin. I don't know what parameters to send or data to pass into this script to do anything. So the, the idea here is you can actually brute force that as well. Um, so this is a tool called Parameth. Uh, you pass it um, a resource name or a script name here. Um, on the bottom, it found a uh, simple test.php script, but it has no idea what parameters to pass this to execute anything. Um, so, uh, or it, found, it could find a path or something like that. Uh, so what it does is it brute forces parameter names um, for that. Um, there's another project that uh, Burp actually put out called uh, Backslash Powered Scanner. And they did a similar research to Dan's, which, but instead of uh, crawling all of the robots.txt files on the internet and putting that into a list, uh, they basically, I don't know where they got the data, but they pulled out the top 2,500 used parameter names on the internet. Um, so you can load that into Parameth and try to find um, parameters that will execute. Um, you know when you're successful because this tool will do uh, like a regex response discovery and a comparison between sending it nothing and then sending it this, this uh, brute force parameter. So it'll tell you, hey, this differed. You should go check this out because I think I actually executed something here. Yeah. Is that similar to what you did at Arsenal? No, that is not. It's a different thing. Yeah. No, this is a command line tool. Yeah. I, you could do it in Burp. You would just have to do it in Intruder. Yeah. It would, I mean, command line tools are usually faster, but if you do it in Burp, you keep it inside of your Burp workflow, which is nice. Yeah. OK, so parameter brute forcing is a thing. All right, so there's a lot of stuff that we've done in here. As, is, you know, like how do you keep track of it? How do you automate it? Like, um, really, there's not great solutions right now. Um, the, the problem here is I see a lot of people making these frameworks to do all this for you. And that's really great. Like uh, Jay Cran at my work has one called Intrigue, and it is the slickest looking OSINT tool. There's one called Datasploit, which is badass, um, which these guys actually make, which is cool. Um, but my problem is that uh, the tools and the sites that I'm scraping and, and that are written right now, um, they change a lot. Like uh, those, sometimes those sites go offline, sometimes they start limiting your API access. Uh, the tool and the technology may be, may be distributed next time it's written. I mean, a lot of these tools are writing their own tools to do this. And so it's never as fast or as complete as I need it to be. So I always end up having to go back to manually using these tools to get the data I want. Um, so there are two projects, one called Hodor and one called Kubot um, by Anshuman Barita. And um, basically the idea here for Hodor is that you set everything up as a Docker container with a standard um, Docker config file. So uh, if you have a new tool, and it's the new hotness, you load it into your Docker config file, um, and then you run one command in Hodor, and it distributes, uh, it distributes your command across all of the machines. Let's say I just say uh, docker up slash something, and then I say tesla.com. It'll stand up new Docker instances for everything, run all my tools uh, simultaneously, and then spit back the output to my host machine. Um, and so that's where I think kind of the future is of everything, because then if I find a new tool I like, it doesn't matter what language it's written, I can just make a Docker container for it um, and start it and bring back the output. Then all I have to do with that output is parse it a little bit on the command line, and it's, it's usable. Um, so I think Hodor and Kubot are, are what I'm going to use in the future. There's also, in the bug bounty world, this, there's this idea of um, in order to hack these things, I have to be the first to know about them. When someone stands up a new subdomain, um, I need to be the first to know about it so I can hack it and get uh, you know, a good bug. Um, Asset Note is, uh, is a framework that will do some of this for you, and you can write custom modules for, and it will basically text you when it finds a new domain. So I have a couple of bug bounty hunters who use this in great success. They get an alert on their phone that says, Tesla stood up a new domain. You need to go home right now, stop whatever you're doing, and go hack it before the rest of the, you know, like 500 other thousand bounty hunters are going to go after it. And so, uh, really, it makes a difference. It does when you're trying to do bug bounty full time for uh, for a living. So. Oh, well, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Yes? Uh, where can we find your talk? Sorry, your I haven't published this version of the slides. Um, 
I don't know, are you guys publishing somehow the slides at all? Yeah, I'll give them to them, and they'll probably be on the Recon Village site. So, yeah. You have a question? Uh, have you used uh, AWS Azure or CloudFlare APIs to do some of your Recon? Yeah, um, yeah so there's, there's also the idea of looking for that kind of stuff. Um, I haven't found any tooling that I've settled on yet. That's why I didn't include any of it. Um, there's probably four or five tools that will scour the internet for uh, misconfigured Git directories and also um, misconfigured AWS S3 buckets. Um, and so I haven't really found one I liked yet, so I didn't add it in the presentation, but that is a method that I do use, yes. Yeah. Yes? I don't do anything from home anymore, so I did a bounty a couple weeks ago, um, and I went up against Akamai's um, WAF, and if you get blocked by Akamai's WAF, it blocks you from PayPal, eBay, all your banks. I tried to register for a hotel, wouldn't let me to that site. My wife was really angry with me. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so I do everything from DigitalOcean VPSs pretty much now. Yeah. They haven't bothered me yet. Yeah. yeah. No what? No Nothing yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, so we have extra recon badges, which are super sweet. Um, how am I going to do this? Uh, somebody name off one of the tools I use in my methodology. All right, who said Burp Suite first over here? It was you, yes. OK, one of these. All right, what was one of these subdomain scraping things that I talked about? He's, I think he said it first. Sublister, yes. Cool. All right, sorry. I only had two. Oh, you dropped your You need the battery. You need the battery. Right there. Um, I also have a couple printed copies of uh, proof of concept or get the F out. Um, so if anybody wants one of those, they can just come up and grab one. So I'll just put them right here. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, really, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it.